Hi, I'm Alex Yang, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about my research and also about becoming a physician scientist. And hopefully by the end of my presentation, you'll know more about my research and also maybe inspire you to become a physician scientist just like me one day. I made a PowerPoint. I'm going to go share it on my screen so you guys can follow along as I go through it. Uh, here it is. So again, today I'm going to talk first a little bit about my research, which is concerning fat cells and how these fat cells can influence other organs in your body, such as the liver and ultimately you and your health. My name is Alex Yang again. I am an MD PhD candidate at Wayne State in Detroit. I just finished my PhD and looking forward to going back to finishing medical school. So this is a this is a zoomed up picture of, of fat cells and you can see it. You know, that might look a little bit different than what you pictured fat cell might look, but that's that's what's in you when you uh when your body produces fat. So what exactly is fat? Well, fat is made up of cells called adipocytes, and their main function is to store energy. So you can imagine when you're Netflix and chilling on your bed and you're consuming excess calories, your body takes in those excess calories and stores it in the form of fat. And then your body can then later use that energy for future use. So that's that describes uh, the normal fat called white fat and that's what we think about when we normally talk about fat as stores energy has a low number of mitochondria and the average human has 30 billion white fat cells which is a lot a lot of cells in your body the brown fat on the other hand that's the special kind of fat that instead of storing energy it burns off energy as heat and it has a high number of mitochondria and it disappears unfortunately only babies have a high amount of brown fat so that's the that's the baby fat that you lose when you grow up so what happens when you have too much fat though you can think of your fat cell almost like as a closet so your closet and your fat they're made to store stuff so your closet is made to store clothes right and your fat cells are made to store fat both of these, they have a limited capacity. So you can you can think of like when your closet, you start to buy too many clothes, your closet starts to overflow, right? Your clothes start to be come on the ground, into your bed, into other rooms in your house. Same thing with the fat cell. If you eat too many calories and you're consuming too much fat, your fat cells are going to expand, and they're going to reach a limit where they can't handle it anymore and your fat starts to seep out into the rest of your body, such as the liver, and cause diseases such as, you know, might have heard some diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and a disease called fatty liver disease, which will, I'll be going into later. So what does the liver do again? You might have learned in your biology classes, but just a quick refresher, the liver does a lot of cool things. It takes in the blood from your GI tract, filters the blood, for any drugs and toxins that you might have ingested and take some fat from once you consumed and it repackaged this fat into the LDL particles, which you might have heard of. And it takes these particles and it's able to transport in, in your bloodstream too for the fat to be used in your other organs in your body. Overall, 10 out of 10 organ, really cool organ. And not only that, it's the biggest internal organ in your body. So pretty impressive. Another cool fact is that the liver also regenerates. So if you cut a little piece off, it regenerates and can grow back, which is, in my opinion, like cool, really cool. My favorite, personally, my favorite organ, if you can't admit, you can't tell already, my favorite organ in the body. The liver is cool, but you need to keep it healthy. And so on the left, there's a, a healthy, you know, bright red, healthy looking liver cool looking liver what happens when you when you have too much fat though it starts to overflow into your liver your liver also becomes fat it becomes pale and you know a little shrunken up it looks not healthy not healthy and that's that's when, when you get this disease called fatty liver disease and it's kind of scary looking right you don't you don't want to get fatty liver disease 
however, a, a high percentage of us have fatty liver disease. So from this graph, you know, you, you can see from your age group, maybe like 10 to 20 percent of you have some form of fatty liver disease. And when you get older, it only increases. So that's, that's kind of scary to think about. So, so you're like, Alex, what can I do to prevent fatty liver? What you can do is watch your diet and your exercise, like any doctor would say. Uh, so your diet, you want to avoid saturated fats and you consume unsaturated fats. You want to avoid simple sugars and consume complex carbohydrates. I'll be getting into more detail about these later uh and you want to you want to try exercise i know we're in a middle of a pandemic but you can still go outside and walk and run uh while still maintaining six feet from each other maintain that social distancing uh or you can do what i've done is you know do at home works work at home exercises on youtube or apps like nike and peloton so unsaturated fats key thing those are the good fats you want to you want to think about these fats as good and they and their structure they have one double bond and these are foods like in this picture like avocados nuts fish olive oil so when you go grocery shopping and try to maybe incorporate some of these into your list so you can increase your diet for unsaturated fats in the long run However, saturated fats, you want to think of these as your bad fats. They do not contain the double carb, double bond. And, you know, these are your fatty meats, like your bacon, your pork, your hot dogs, and, you know, your butter. So when you cook, try to avoid, you know, try to avoid butter. I'm not, I'm not saying uh, don't eat butter or don't eat bacon, but try to cut down on your consumption of saturated fats and increase your consumption of unsaturated fats. So sugars are, can also cause fatty liver disease. So in, increasing your amount of sugar consumption, especially high fructose corn syrup, which can be found in you know, your pops, and your sweet snacks, you know, that, can be, that can also cause fatty liver disease. So next time when you go shopping for your snacks and your pop, try to avoid those that contain high fructose corn syrup or but yeah, try to avoid them completely and try to focus on your healthier snacks, such as nuts, which can contain like your good fats, like your unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, your complex carbohydrates, you know, those, those are your good sugars. You want to think about these as your good sugars. And they have more nutrients than you know, the simple sugars. They have fiber and they digest more slowly. And eating these can help you prevent you from getting fatty liver disease. So these foods contain like corn, you know, your breads, your wheats, your potatoes, your pasta, potatoes, your beans. So you're, you can control your diet and your exercise, but something that you can't control are, is your genes. And so actually what I study in lab are the genetic causes of fatty liver disease. You may have learned from your classes, your, your genes are encoded by nucleotides, DNA in your body. Well, there are these things called single nucleotide polymorphs, which is basically a change in one nucleotide. So for example, maybe I have an A and you have a G, and those are what make me different from you. And what I've been trying to study is how some SNPs cause fatty liver disease in people and why. I'm trying to figure that out. And hopefully that will lead to more therapies for fatty liver disease. And Ultimately, we don't have a cure for fatty liver disease right now. So the reason I gave you this quick lecture today um, is I want to maybe convince some of you to become physician scientists like what I want to be when I grow up. So if you want to help people directly by being a doctor and indirectly by being a scientist and you love science, you want to discover new things, you know, really think about becoming a physician scientist maybe when you grow up. You know, people might ask you now even like what you want to be when you grow up and you're still not sure. Maybe next time tell them you want to be a physician scientist, just like Alex. Uh, so this is my uh, contact info. If, if any of you are interested in 
I have questions about the comp, just send us. Here's all my contact info. Uh, feel free to contact me through email. I have a Twitter. I even recently made a TikTok just because I was bored. I, I do have some videos on there if you want to look, and my Instagram too. So I just want to thank you for this opportunity for teaching this mini lesson by uh, a medical scientist. Thank you.